Hey podcasting world, it is Fancy Quant, and today we're going to talk about risk and risk management, uh, the different components here. So this has really come up in the fact that somebody started asking me some questions, um, they're wanting me to define risk, and then I keep struggling with this concept of explaining to people risk management is no different in quantitative finance um, than other parts of quantitative finance as a whole. And there's been a lot of confusion here. And so I started thinking about this as a bigger picture as well, because I made a video, I don't know, probably two years ago on risk management. And it's not really risk management as a general purpose. It's risk management as what I do in my very specific realm. So today I just want to talk about the big picture. And then I want to kind of zoom down into the smaller components and then talk about the disconnect between the upper level and the lower level and why there's so much confusion and misunderstanding and kind of how we got to the position that we're in today in the finance industry, but also looking at this more from a business perspective and investing perspective and just different kind of angles and views here on risk management. Okay, so when you actually Google risk management here, risk management comes up and it says, in business, the forecasting and evaluation of financial risks together with the identification uh, procedures to avoid or minimize their impact. This is kind of true, but kind of not true. I don't think it's an only a business concept here, right? So risk management can be applied to something like, I don't know, launching rocket ships with NASA and trying to prevent people from dying. So there might be risk management procedures and practices. So I don't like this risk management definition from Google here. So I said, okay, Let's make this more general here. We know what management is, but let's define risk a little bit more. So if you actually Google what is the risk definition, um, it says a situation involving exposure to danger. So I think this is a better definition if you pair it with the management side. So we have a situation involving exposure to danger, and somehow we are going to manage that risk. Um, more specifically here, risk is realistically just the unknown. So I think that's a better way to look at it. Risk is an unknown. For example, you're in a business, you're in finance, you're in NASA, right, launching rockets, or I don't know, you're doing all these different tasks in the real world. Um, even driving your car, for example, I'm driving my car to work today. Um, there's a risk involved. And so risk management is just managing those unknowns. So for example, I get in my car, um, risk management practices would be putting my seatbelt on. Uh, I'd be driving the speed limit. It'd be following the laws, for example, right? If I do all of these different rules and I kind of put these into perspective here, I can minimize my risk. Now, if I decide not to wear my seatbelt and I decide to drive recklessly and not stay in the lines and I decide to go, I don't know, 30 over the speed limit and like I'm going around corners too fast, there's a lot of risk involved here, right? I, there's a lot of unknown. Um, am I going to hit somebody? Am I going to hit an animal? Am I going to hit an object? Is my car going to roll? Am I going to go off the road? Right? These are all things that are risks that are essentially not business risk. So I think looking at risk management as a general term is more important um, because you'll start seeing here different groups inside of banks and businesses, for example, in trading firms, all define risk differently and yet they're all correct. It's just they're so pigeonholed and so focused on one topic um, that it makes it seem like what they talk about is the only type of risk or risk management and that things that are going to be larger in a bigger perspective, they don't include as real risk management. So that's just the definition here of risk and risk management. Um, let's start at the kind of the, I guess the history here a little bit for finance and banking. Um, risk management is realistically just a term that's been tacked on after the financial crisis, um, perhaps slightly before, but in general, it's a kind of catch-all bend to show regulators that banks, yes, are managing their risks and that they are financially responsible. And because we're financially responsible, right, we don't need to be fined or micromanaged by the regulators. That's realistically what's happening here. And I'm gonna explain why this is kind of occurring. So in risk management, we have what we like to call uh, lines of defense. You have first line of defense, second line of defense, third line of defense. Um, from my job perspective, first line, they consider model development. So those are building models. Second line of defense is considered validation. And third line is internal audit. So essentially first line generates a lot of risk usually, and they manage it by making decisions and whatnot. 
and then second line checks that, and then third line checks the second line. So there's all these layers of checking. Um, but a lot of times when you start looking at banks and financial institutions in general, you start realizing that the first line of defense here is not necessarily, they're not quants, they're not model development. So I mentioned right model development validation and internal audit. A lot of times in risk management, there's other departments, other areas that are now being labeled as risk that are essentially just business units. So it's somebody who's originating loans, um, it's somebody who's managing like operational risk. When I say managing operational risk though, right, it's not really risk management. Um, they're making decisions on how to operate the business. Now again, there's risk involved, but again, banks decided we're gonna start labeling all these people as risk. So now it starts getting confusing because when you look at quantitative finance, which is what I do for a living, we label that as risk management. And so you assume, okay, quantitative finance is risk management at a bank and it does quantitative modeling to predict different risks and that's risk management. But then banks decided they needed to have these very large risk departments and they needed to talk about risk and embed it into their culture. And so to do that, a lot of these other departments, which would have been considered like operations or decision sciences or different things that aren't necessarily model driven, they're gonna be analytical driven usually, there's some sort of strategy involved, right? There's a lot of like business side involved. These are going to be considered risk management as well. So now it gets confusing because you have people with business degrees, finance degrees, MBAs, accounting and all that, and operational research degrees, and then you have statistics degrees and risk management and financial engineering degrees. And so now you have all these people that have this vastly different diverse skill sets here and they're all being called risk. And I should note too, like internal audits looking at this, internal audits usually an accounting background, but more generally it's a business background, a processes background, a procedures background, Again, so now you're looking at this and you're kind of confused, at least if you're coming from the quantitative finance side, because you start thinking like, wait, I thought I was risk management, but now it seems like everybody's risk management. And so I think this is why the confusion is occurring with students and industry practitioners and people on the outside as well, looking in at our industry here. Risk management is such a broad term. It's realistically a term that can be used on anybody. So right? Risk is the unknown, something that we don't know, um, even something like accounting. So you're doing accounting, you're putting in all you know, your records and stuff. But a lot of times there are things like depreciation of an asset. Depending how you depreciate that, there's a risk, there's an unknown there, right? Which method do you use? Is there a standard for the industry? Are you choosing to use a different methodology here? How do you value the asset at the end of the life of depreciation? So say I buy a giant, I don't know, 100 ton crane, um, and I'm using it for depreciation. A lot of times you have to take out the salvage value at the end. So again, this is accounting. Um, how do you get to that value, right? This is accounting. This has nothing to do with financial modeling or quantitative analytics. This is just pure accounting. So risk management is just this unknown process. So anybody that works inside of a business anywhere is gonna have a risk management title or a label that you could put on yourself in the sense that businesses are unknown, um, there's uncertainty and we need to manage these and make decisions and based on that you all work in risk management. So realistically risk management becomes this meaningless word that has no value. And this is where it gets a little confusing. So then when you dive down into quantitative finance, which is a very specific role within banks, um, quantitative finance, so just defining this a little bit more, are gonna be those people that are using statistical models, methods and mathematics along with computer science to analyze and implement um, measurements of things that are uncertain or unknown here. A lot of times we do forecasts and predictions. So you would have financial situations. Um, let's say you wanna make a loan to somebody. We don't know if that person's gonna repay the loan or not. We need to model that and make a decision on, do I wanna loan, lend them money or do I not wanna lend them money? Um, again, this is a credit side. And then one of the confusions that gets involved here is people say, Dimitri, um, risk management's dumb. I work on the investing side. Like I want to be a quant. I don't want to be a risk manager. And this is another kind of clarity to clarify here. Um, so risk management, again, is this broad tag that we've just thrown on everybody. So these quants that are building statistical models to predict things like credit losses. Um, also in a bank, if you're managing, for example, market risk and portfolios, you have interest rates that are moving, for example, that impact financial instruments that you hold. Um, these are all risk management people. So at a bank, right, you're gonna have the tag of model developer and risk management, but you're doing market risk. So you're actually modeling market 
positions, basically, or market risks involved with your portfolio. So these guys are going to be the exact same types of people that are working at an investment firm. The difference is, is that investing firms and hedge funds, a lot of times, they call these like quantitative model developers, uh, quantitative researchers, right? It's a similar role here. You're both building models. You could even be building models for the exact same asset or position here or the risks involved. But at the end of the day, risk management is such a broad term. There starts to get this weird divide where it's like banking gets labeled weird. And then the investing side thinks that like they don't need risk management. But a lot of times they already have processes in place, but they don't quite understand the differences here. So people in different roles are going to have different titles. But yes, at the end of the day, quants are quants are quants. They're all the same. It doesn't matter if you're a model developer at a risk management at a bank, because that's what banks like to call us. Or if you're a model developer or a quantitative researcher, for example, um, at a trading firm, you're doing essentially the same job. So hopefully we can clarify a little bit of that and clean that up here, that the quant jobs are going to be the same across different industries and different types. Um, sometimes it's just a little more confusing on how they're the same. But again, they're still going to be using statistical models and mathematics and financial theory along with computer science um, to implement these. So now let's get into a little bit of the confusion here on why this causes issues from a student perspective. Um, so a lot of students will get something. So for example, there's the financial risk management designation, the FRM. And there's also something called the PRM, which is a little bit less popular, at least in different areas in the US that I've seen. But in general, let's talk about the FRM. The FRM designation is a financial risk management designation. But again, it's looking at risk at a very high level. Okay, so this is going to be more or less a business perspective here. Um, this is where a lot of the confusion comes about. And I think this is kind of a detriment in many ways. There needs to be different labeling between the business halves and the quant halves of risk management and finance, banking, and industries in general. Because what ends up happening is somebody goes out and they say, I have an MBA, for example, or a business degree or a finance degree or something, right? And they say, Dimitri, I went and I got the FRM and I'm going to apply for these risk management jobs. So I'm like, awesome, right? I'm excited. You want to be in the industry. And then they start showing me the listings and they say, I've applied for like a hundred of these jobs and nobody's accepted my applications. I haven't heard anything back. I don't know what's going on. And I say, okay, well, great. Can you send me the listing? So I look at them and they're model development or model validation jobs, right? These are requiring masters in financial engineering, statistics, applied mathematics, right? They're requiring a heavy, heavy math background, and they're going to expect that you're going to have a four-year undergrad in something quantitative like engineering or math or stats or computer science. And then they're going to assume on top of that you have a master's at minimum, but many times they prefer that PhD. And so that's what they're expecting. And then you have a business background and you have the FRM and you're applying thinking that somehow the FRM is going to do the same as a master's. It's not. And again, now it's getting confusing, right? Because the FRM is financial risk management. So I should be able to be a risk management model developer. But that's where the issue comes in here with a lot of the labeling is that they're two completely different worlds here. And I'm not happy the way finance has done this. They've labeled everybody the same. I think those that are going to work on the business side should have kept their business titles like your operations research. You don't work in risk management. That's not a thing. Um, just labeling it for regulatory purposes, I think is pretty ridiculous. That or you need to relabel the quantitative side here because again, they all work together though. And this is where I think the confusion comes in. And I don't know what the clear solution would be here, but model developers build models to predict uncertainties. And then these models are typically utilized by business units. So we're the actual first line of defense or even people that aren't considered in the lines of defense here. Those that are managing risk, those are gonna be the ones that are looking at all these numbers and then making a decision for the bank, the business, the financial institution, the trading firm, right? Whatever you're talking about here, they're gonna make the decision based on these models. So again, they are managing risk, but they're not doing it in the same way here. And this again causes more confusion here. And so just to kind of wrap this video up here, right? You have to be careful when you discuss risk management as a whole, which was the purpose of this video, is trying to show there's a little bit of confusion and there's different skill sets. So things like the FRM, for example, are very high level. You understand what credit risk is and market risk, and you understand even more detailed things like probability of default, um, expected credit loss, for example, calculating these things out. You get all of that, but you're not really going to be doing the very nitty gritty deep modeling development side on the other side. So I think it's important that we differentiate these sometimes because 
it causes confusion for students a lot of times. You'll be pursuing something and you think you're pursuing what you want to do, and then you realize why and it's too late, you don't have the skills to do it. And then sometimes you can't see the other half. So you're confused on like, right, they might call something like operations research or strategy or something, and you don't realize that's also a risk management style role and it's utilizing models and data, but it's more on the business side, which might better fit you. Quants are the same, right? You might end up being a quant, going to school, getting stats degrees, and then wanting to do a lot of strategy and like hands-on kind of work with the business and the decisioning. And then you don't really have the business side to do the business job here, like the operations side, or even like, I don't know, other types of decisioning and business. But in general, right, risk management is a complicated topic. Um, risk management can be both quantitative and qualitative. I would like to see more integration between the two halves. I'd like to see more cross education between them. So no, I don't think business people need to learn all the quant material. I don't think quant people need to learn all the business material, but definitely learning more of it on each half will help us better bridge the gap. So risk management is a complicated topic. Um, again, it can be used in any industry, but that's kind of the wrap up here for this podcast today. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.